Before they launch missiles, they launch propaganda campaigns. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Before they launch missiles, they launch propaganda campaigns. Before they roll out tanks, they roll out narratives. Everyone who helps manufacture consent for the killing in Gaza is just as culpable for the murder of thousands of children as the people dropping the bombs. In case you missed it, there's an overwhelming amount of evidence that many of the horrific acts Hamas is accused of committing on October 7th, burning people alive, burning babies, mowing down concert goers, etc., were actually the result of indiscriminate fire by Israeli forces. And in the article, there's a link to a gray zone piece and a link to a video presentation by Propaganda and Company, both citing Israeli media reports as their evidence. None of this means Israel killed everyone who died on October 7th, or that Hamas did not kill non-combatants. It just means the narrative is wrong. Remember that murderer who took a U.S. elementary school classroom hostage, and the U.S. Air Force dropped a Moab on the school and killed all the children, and everyone was cool with it because they needed to kill the guy and he was using the kids as human shields? No? Me neither. Israel apologists don't seem to get that we've seen every part of their tired shtick before. Anti-Semite? Saw it with Jeremy Corbyn. Terrorist supporter? Saw it with Bush's wars. Unprovoked attack? Saw it with Ukraine. If you want to fool people, get an original routine. Every once in a while, I remember that a significant percentage of the Israel apologists yelling at me on social media are American Christians who support Israel because they want Jesus to come back and cast all the unrepentant Jews into hell. There's a video of Benjamin Netanyahu going full genocidal, calling Palestinians Amalek and citing the Bible to justify their destruction. The Bible called to utterly destroy all that Amalek have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. Tweet by Caitlin. Western officials, Israel is defending itself. Israeli officials, we're doing genocide. Western officials, they're following the laws of war. Israeli officials, we're going to do way more genocide. Western officials, it's a measured response to October 7th. Israeli officials, kill their babies. I see people saying the U.S. gets nothing out of its alliance with Israel and it's all one way, which is inaccurate. The interests of the U.S. empire are massively advanced by having a nuclear-armed intelligence proxy in a strategically crucial resource-rich region, constantly inflicting violence and chaos on non-U.S. aligned nations. Perhaps more importantly, Israel's existence serves as the ultimate argument against ever removing U.S. troops from the Middle East, which it doesn't want to do because of its interest in controlling the world's fossil fuel supply. As Joe Biden said, if Israel didn't exist, we would have to invent it. People often point to Israel's aggressive lobbying efforts in Washington to argue that the alliance is not mutually beneficial, but lobbying is just one of the adhesives which holds an unofficial, unacknowledged empire together. You may be certain that if Washington didn't want Israel manipulating U.S. politics in its own interests, it wouldn't be happening. The U.S. government has plenty of legal tools at its disposal to shut that down if it wants. Israel has no qualms about pushing the U.S. to give it the most it can get for the smallest possible return because it understands, quite correctly, that in the end Israel is just an ally of convenience and the U.S. will immediately throw it under the bus the moment it's in the empire's interests to do so. Israel has an extensive history of aligning with hostile and unpredictable powers to advance its own interests, like anti-Semitic Christian Zionists and supporting the rise of Hamas. So the two power structures use each other for whatever they can get in exchange, and because of the way Israel was set up from the beginning, their interests are aligned far more often than not. Remember, everyone, before you criticize an ongoing genocidal massacre that's been supported by your own country, you must first condemn a small foreign militant group who has spotty internet access, doesn't speak your language, and will never hear anything you say about them. They tell you Israel is defending itself when you can see it's mostly killing women and children. They tell you they're targeting Hamas when you can see them flattening whole city blocks. They tell you you're an anti-Semite when you know you're not. All they've got is gaslighting.